So now that we know how to find a definite integral, let's talk about what integration means in terms of calculus area under the curve. In another video, we already went ahead and did the anti-power rule to find the antiderivative, and we applied the lower bound and the upper bound to figure out the area. So in case you missed it, I'm going to put the link in the description below so that you can refer back to that video. So today we're going to talk about how this relates to the area under the curve. Take a look. We're talking about 6x squared plus 3x plus 2. This is a quadratic function. So if I were to graph this on a coordinate plane, basically what I want to figure out is what this would look like from my lower bound to my upper bound. My lower bound is 1, my upper bound is 3. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to create my coordinate plane. Here's my x and here's my y axis. And I basically want to find what is going on with my graph between my lower bound and my upper bound. So they give us an interval to work with. I'm not looking at the entire function. I'm only looking at what is happening between 1 to 3 on the x-axis. So what I'm going to do is set up a table of values so that when I go ahead, I can graph this. I'm going to substitute 1, 2, and 3 since I'm going from when x is equal to 1 to when x is equal to 3. And I'm going to take the time right now and just plug it in to my function. So I have 6 times 1 squared plus 3 times 1 plus 2. That means 6 plus 3 is 9 plus 2 is 11. If I substitute 2, I get 6 times 2 squared plus 3 times 2 plus 2. So 2 squared is 4 times 6, 24. 24 plus 6 is 30 plus 2 is 32. And then 6 times 3 squared plus 3 times 3 plus 2 is going to equal. 3 squared is 9 times 6, 54. 54 plus 9 is going to be 63 plus 2, 65. So I'm going to go over here to my graph and I'm going to use a scale of 1, 2, 3 on my x-axis. And then on my y-axis, I want to go all the way to 65. So that means that maybe I want to, I don't know, go up by 10 maybe. That way it'll be easier for us. So I'm going to go ahead and go 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70. Barely fits. So now I'm going to go ahead and plot my points. So I have the point 1, 11. So I'm going to put a point right here. 2, 32. So I go to x equals 2 and then I go to 32. And then 3, 65. So I 3, I go up to 65. And this is a curve because it is part of a parabola. So essentially what I'm trying to find is the area under this curve. So from 1 to 3 all of this area that I'm shading in right now, that's basically what I'm trying to do with the integration. I'm trying to determine what is the area with respect to x, because remember that's what dx means. So my boundary here is the x-axis, and then everything from 0 all the way to 3. And when we did this the long way, in the video that I did on definite integral of, you remember that our answer was 68. So that means that the area bounded from 1, from when x equals 1 to x equals 3, this area is going to equal 68. Now what I want to show you is how to do this on the calculator, okay? So let's go ahead now and let's go look at the calculator. Okay, so on our graphing calculator, I'm going to go to y equals, and I'm going to enter the equation 6x squared plus 3x plus 2. Now, if you remember, it took us a little while. I mean, I was able to do it rather quickly, but some of you may not be so good at your mental math. So the beauty of the calculator is that as soon as you go into y equals, you can go to second graph, which is your table. And notice, since I'm trying to find this from 1 to 3, I can right away tell exactly what those values are without having to manually substitute the values ourselves. So here I know that I want to go basically from 11, because that's the y value when x is equal to 1, 
all the way to 65. So before I press graph on my calculator, because if I press graph, you're going to see that it gives us a very standard window of negative 10 to 10, negative 10 to 10. I can go ahead and I can adjust my window. And when I adjust this window, it's basically just going to reflect what I ended up doing by hand. So I'm going to go from one to three and then from zero to 70. So I'm going to make my X minimum. I can make a zero actually. That way I don't have the graph so tight and I can make this five just to give it a little bit of breathing room. Then the Y minimum, I'm going to make a zero. The Y max is 70 and the Y scale is 10. So I'm going to go ahead and graph. So what this does is give us a closer look at what is happening in that very small space so that we can quickly and easily find the area under the curve. To find the area under the curve, we're going to go ahead and go to second trace, which is calculate. We're going to go ahead and choose option seven, which is to find the integral. It's going to ask us for the lower limit. In this case, the lower limit was one because we're integrating from one to three press enter. Then my upper limit is three press enter again. And notice the calculator has shaded for us the area that we are looking for, which is the area in the interval from one to three bounded by the X axis with respect to X. And notice it gave us the answer of 68, which is exactly what we got when we did this the long way by finding the antiderivative and substituting the upper bound and the lower bound. In case you're wondering if the calculator would have given you the answer, even if you wouldn't have adjusted the window, let's go ahead and try it here. I just did zoom six, which puts it at a standard window, the same one, negative 10 to 10, negative 10 to 10, which is a basic classic window. And I'm going to go ahead and go second trace option seven, lower limit is one upper limit is three and I press enter. And even though it doesn't give me that good of a picture in terms of what is happening, it still does give me that area, which is going to be 68. Obviously when we did it before, we got a much better look at exactly what is happening. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and try this process one more time with another problem that we already know the answer to. In this case, we're finding the integral from negative one to two of three X squared minus two X plus one with respect to X, that's DX. And when we did this last time, our answer is nine. And so what that basically means is that the area under the curve for that quadratic function is going to be nine between negative one and two, because that's the interval that we are given. So let's go ahead and try this ourselves. First, let's go ahead and create a graph because I'm going from this lower limit of negative one to this upper limit of two. I'm going to quickly create a table of values from negative one, zero, one, and two. Instead of manually substituting this in, since I do have access to a graphing calculator, I'm going to go ahead and ask it to help me. So in my graphing calculator, I'm going to clear what I had already written there before. I'm going to enter three X squared minus two X plus one. I'm going to go now to second graph so that I can look at my table to find out what is happening between negative one and two. So at negative one, I'm at six, zero, one, one, two, two, nine. So six, one, two, nine. So this is six, one, two, nine. And I'm going to go ahead and put this on my graph. So here's negative one and then it goes one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine to get an idea of what this graph looks like. So at negative one, I'm at positive six, one, two, three, four, five, six. So somewhere right here at zero, I'm at one. That's the Y intercept at one. I'm at two and then at two, I'm up at nine. So notice this is the part of the parabola that we want. And so we want to figure out what's the area underneath this curve bounded by negative one and positive two. Those are not very straight, but it's okay. You get the idea. And so this is all with respect to the X axis. So basically this is the area that we want. When we did this previously, we got an answer of nine. So here I already know my answer is going to be nine. I'm going to show you how we can get this from our calculator. I'm going to go ahead and go to window. I'm going to start my X at negative two. And if you notice, I like to start my X's and end my X's not exactly at the numbers they give me. So not exactly negative one to two. Maybe I'll do negative two to positive three just to give it a little bit of breathing room. So that way I get a better picture. I'm going to make my X max three, my X scale one. My Y min is going to be zero. My Y max, I can leave it at 10. It really wasn't that big of a number. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and put graph. Now I go to second trace and I basically want option number seven. So make sure you press seven and you want the lower limit to be negative one, press enter. And then my upper limit is two, press enter. And voila, that's exactly what you want. You want the area bounded by the graph. So the area underneath the curve bounded by the x-axis from the interval negative one to positive two, and the area is nine. Hope you found this video helpful. Remember to subscribe to my channel for more help with math so that you can say, yes, I can do math with confidence. Until next time, thanks for watching.